Welcome back to another episode of the Field of 68's Off-Season Grades, and today we're going to be breaking down one of the sneaky teams in the SEC this season. There's a lot of talent at the top of the league, and one of the teams that has to be in that conversation today, uh, Ole Miss. My name is Rob Dosser. I have John Martin with me, and we are going to be breaking down Chris Beard's Rebels today. Uh, John, I really really like this roster and i think i might like this roster probably a little bit too much for my own good um they kind of changed over a lot of things they bring back some really important pieces specifically matthew morell jalen murray and jamie brakefield and they went out and they added five guys in the portal that i think can have an immediate impact on their team this season and dre davis sean padula uh, michael brown jones malik dia and davon barnes I think that this team is top 20 good. I think this team can push for top five in the SEC. And I think that this is going to be the first year that Chris Beard at Ole Miss finds a way to be able to get to not just the tournament, but also win a game, maybe two. I think they're that good. Yeah, I mean, listen, you you saw, you know, flashes of it a, a season ago, and obviously that was his first year. And anytime you're talking about, a you know, a first-year head coach, it's going to take time, uh, even in this day and age. But, I mean, they started, what, 13-0? and 0? Uh, before they lost to Tennessee in January. And I know that that wasn't necessarily against world beaters, but that did include a win against Memphis. It did include a road win at UCF. Um, I mean, again, I'm uh, I'm not suggesting that that's, you know, top 10 Ken Palm or anything like that. But for a first year head coach, um, you could sort of, you could see the vision there. Um, so now, you know, you get 20 wins your first year, which, you know, that's not like some I- I- in- indicative barometer the way it used to be 20 wins, but um you're start you're sort of starting to feel like okay you keep Matthew Morrell you know you you move some other pieces that you sort of inherited out and now you're getting the guys that you want I mean the one thing that I don't think we really have to question in college basketball is the um you know h- how prolific a coach Chris Beard is and and now that you know this is his second season he's getting a little bit more comfortable in Oxford you know I I don't know what a, a step necessarily looks like and I'm sure we'll get to that but uh, there there should be one inbound in Oxford, Mississippi this year. Yeah, you know, the thing that I really like about the way that he's put this roster together is that they go about eight or nine deep. They have size, they have depth, they have versatility, they have shot making, they have floor spacing, they're older. Um, you know, they have two point guards, Sean Padula and, and Jalen Murray, that can both kind of handle the load. They got a couple of different big guys that they can kind of put in different situations. And both of them, Mikhail Brown Jones and Malik Diaz specifically can step out and knock down a jump shot. Um, I think when you look at the likes of Matthew Morrell, Dre Davis, uh, Devon Barnes, Jamer Brakefield, TJ Caldwell, you have a whole bunch of different guys that can do a little bit of different, uh, have a different skill set that can all play that like two through four range. Mm-hmm and allow you to be able to be versatile and be switchable and do different things defensively and do different things offensively. And I I just, I think with the depth of talent, that is a really good sign. And I'll tell you what, they were a beneficiary of jobs like uh, like, uh, Louisville and Kentucky and some of these other big names opening up where Chris Beard was kind of able to say, hey, look, you know what? You want me back here? You want me to stay at Ole Miss? Well, let's get that NIL bag going a little bit more. Let's kind of get this extension going where instead of the money just funneling into the coaching staff, you put a little bit in the bank that I could use to be able to go get me some players. And you know what he did, John? He went out and he got him some players. He did. And Ole Miss has always been interesting to me, man, because like they have, it's never been like a, 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 a great program. You know, it's sort of just kind of middled. Andy mm-hmm. had a couple of years there, right? Um, but it's just kind of never taken off. But the one thing about Ole Miss, you know, I'm in Memphis, I'm, you know, 90 miles outside of Oxford, like there's money. There is money uh, in Oxford. And the o- Ole Miss boosters care uh, passionately about Ole Miss athletics. And I think that's the thing about if you get a, you know, normally Ole Miss would never have been opened up to a chance to have a coach like Chris Beard. We know about the circumstances that led that happening. But now that, they, now that he's there, right, it's, it's reinvigorating. It's reinvigorating for all that money that maybe was like, you know, apathetic to Ole Miss basketball. And so I think he's taking advantage of that. And look, I, I'm not saying Ole Miss becomes some destination. Uh, you know, we, we, we understand where they sort of are on the totem pole, but he's done a good job of energizing the people down there. And like you said, it's translated into now building out this roster and one that's going to contend for an NCAA tournament appearance. Yeah. And, and you know what? I, I think, 
I think one thing that people kind of underestimate when it comes to success of coaches at football jobs is especially in the SEC, a little bit in the Big 12, but the amount of passion that these fans have for just their school, right? Like, yep. look exactly. at what Bruce Pearl has done at Auburn. Did anybody ever think that Auburn would ever be considered a place that has the best home court potentially in the SEC? Yep that has had more success than Kentucky in recent years in the sport of basketball that can legitimately be considered year in and year out, like a top 10 team SEC title contender. No, but what pays Bruce, its coach. A top yes. Seven top. Yes. I mean, Bruce had an opportunity to, to maybe go after Louisville to maybe go after Kentucky. Like he was the name everyone was talking about when UConn was, when there was the thought that UConn might open up. And like, you never heard him anywhere. He didn't even need to get an extension. Like, I think it's just kind of one of those things where like, he's not leaving Auburn and you know, he's not leaving Auburn because he fits there for a lot of different reasons, but because he's been able to get out into, uh, into like the the area and into the town and into the fan base and people see him and he innovate uh, energizes people and that's what beer does really really well is that he will be able to go out and find a way to connect with the fan base to connect with the local people like i remember when he was at texas one of the things that i heard when he was is he would go out to some of the local like the the local children's shelters and just start handing out texas basketball shirts and he was his whole thing was like well look if uh if we need to get fans in here then maybe i can go target this community right here. Maybe I can go target the Hispanic community, be able to get them to come in and watch yep. Texas basketball and get them fired up about it. And I think he's going to find a way to be able to do that um, at Ole Miss. Here's my yeah. question to you. Okay. Normally, John, when we do X factors on these videos, I try to come up with like one player that is the X factor. Uh, and for me, it's not one player at Ole Miss. How are they all going to fit together? Right? Like you have three guys that are coming back to school this year and Jalen Murray, Jamin Brakefield, and Matthew Morell that played really, really big roles this past season that may not start this year. They may have been recruited over. You have guys like Mikel, uh, Michael Brown Jones, who averaged 19 and eight this past season at, um, at UNC Greensboro, right? Coming in expecting to be a starter. He may not start over Malik Dia, who is also coming in expecting to be a starter, right? So at some point, Sean Padula, right? He's going to be in a, a battle at the point guard spot with Jalen Murray. So, competition in practice is a really really good thing but if you end up with kids that are pissed off they're not starting pissed off they're not getting as many shots as they're expected that think that they're torpedoing their chance to be in the nba like that's a really delicate balance that beard's gonna have to navigate finding a way to keep eight or nine people like there's almost too many cooks in the kitchen to a point when everybody's right. going to be expecting to come in and be the guy yeah i mean that's definitely a dynamic that we've seen cost so many college basketball seasons right and i think it's amplified now in the age of the portal because you know uh, maybe a, an incumbent guy is like well i, I could have gotten x y and z somewhere else i came back here because you know i was being loyal because i was gonna i was promised this i was promised that um but at the same time you know chris beard's job and any coach's job is to you know win the most amount of games which uh, is going to going to involve getting the best players and sometimes guys are going to play less minutes. You know, I've seen that up close and personal veterans, you know, that return are a little um, reticent or resentful of the newcomers because they might get a little bit more opportunities. Look, I think a guy like Matthew Morrell is, is, is proved at this point. He was on draft boards. Like I expect him to, you know, he's been there for his whole career. I expect him to sort of have the, the inner track, but look, I mean, it's, it's part of, this is Chris Beard's second year. He's still trying to figure out and navigate, okay, we, we were 7-11 in the SEC last year. That's not good enough. And some of you guys were on the team, right? I'm not blaming you, but some of you guys were on the team. So the idea that any job is earmarked for anybody, uh, I think is absolutely, it's ridiculous. You know, everything should be up for grabs when you finish below 500 in your conference. So I expect that to be the case, and that's going to be the challenge for Chris. But he's a veteran. You know, he, he's a good coach. He's been through this before. If you haven't heard by now, we have partnered with BetMGM Sportsbook. We are going to be using BetMGM lines to make all of our picks, and we'll have special offers for the listeners and the viewers of the Field of 68 throughout the year. If you haven't signed up for BetMGM yet, you can use bonus code FIELD, and you will get up to a $1,500 first bet offer on your first wager with BetMGM. The best part, all you need to do is deposit and bet $10 of your own 
hard-earned money to be eligible. Here's how you make it work. Download the BetMGM app and sign up using that bonus code FIELD. Deposit at least $10 and place your first wager on any game, and you will receive up to $1,500 in bonus bets if your bet loses. Just make sure that you use that bonus code FIELD when you sign up. BetMGM is going to have some fun offers available throughout the NBA playoffs. Bet insurance tokens, odds boost, and what I love, a nice parlay boost or two from time to time, as well as a ridiculous array of player prop bets for any sport that you could possibly imagine betting on. BetMGM is and always will be the king of the prop bet. So go download the BetMGM app, use the bonus code FIELD, and sign up today. And while I've got you, a quick request. The best way to support the Field of 68 content that you get for free is to engage with us. Rate and review the podcast. Like and share the YouTube videos. Tell your friends about us. It all helps in a world where the algorithm is king. And now, back to the show. Yeah, it's not the first time that he's tried to build a roster on the fly. Like, he came from the Juco ranks. His whole thing when he was at uh little rock and then at texas tech was yeah i could just bring in a whole bunch of new guys and find a way to make it work right like he would be at a stop for one year and then move on because he had so much success so um I, I think that he has the tools to be able to do it i just worry like once you start paying these kids and once they start getting paychecks like if they're they're still getting those nil checks and they're not playing the minutes that they want to play like how long are you going to stay checked in when you're already making some money it, it just changes right. the dynamic and so being able to get like, that's going to be the key. It is like for every team, but I do think that for this specific roster, because of the way that he went out and built it more. Right. So it's going to be like, you got to make sure everybody is accepting of the role that they're going to be able yes. to, they're, they're going to be asked to play this year. So. Cause it's not a total flip. It's no. not a total. Flip. I mean, yep. you're bringing back key contributors from a year ago. Yeah. Like Moose is gone and Jamarion Sharp is gone and, 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 you know, Flanagan is gone, but you're still bringing back, so many guys that, you know, again, have expectations at a baseline of playing time, probably, uh, you know, have NIL deals too. And um, so that's, that is just. They definitely have NIL deals, John. I promise you that. (laughs) (laughs) So so (laughs) everybody's got an NIL deal, man. Everybody's got an NIL deal. So that's just going to be part of the dynamic. Um, Again, some, some rosters just flip over. And so it's easier to say, go get it, go grab it. Um, I will be I will be fascinated to watch sort of how that all unfolds at Oxford when you know you're bringing back you know top minute getters. Yep. All right. Give me the expectations you have for this group. I think Alabama is the class of the SEC, and then like there are like eight teams: Auburn, mm-hmm. Arkansas, Kentucky, Tennessee, Texas A and M. I'd even throw Mississippi State in there, right? And then you got Ole Miss. Like I think there are eight teams that can all make an argument for being like or no. So there's uh, there's Alabama and then there's seven other teams that can make the argument for being the second best right. team potentially in the SEC. And I wouldn't hate you if you made that argument. Yeah. I mean, I think, uh, you know, I think you're a little higher maybe on Ole Miss than I am. Um, I mean, I, I think they'll be better, obviously, you know, just because it, it, I, I'm high on Chris Beard. I, mean, I don't know how you can't be. I think a good season for them would be like they were 7-11 in the SEC last year. You know, if they could somehow flip that. Yeah. You know, if they could be 11 and seven. I think that would have, you would have finished what? One, two, three, four, five. That would have, you would have finished sixth in the SEC last year, 11 and seven. That's what Florida was. That's a very good year for me, in my opinion. Um, you know, uh, it, you're, you're right there in the tournament discussion. Um, you know, Florida made it. So, I mean, you're going to be, you're going to be right there in the, in the tournament. So you're probably going to be an at large. So I think if you were able to flip it, even if you're nine and nine, right, if you finish 500, I think that's probably good enough, but, in terms of serious success, I'd say if you flip your in-conference record, that'd be a good year for Ole Miss. Yeah, the, to be clear, I think I'd probably have them as the uh, the fifth or sixth best team in the SEC in the preseason. But I can see a path to them being able to finish like – I wouldn't be shocked if they finished like 13-5 of five in the SEC and that was good enough for like a tie for second place. It was. Um, but <laughs> – you haven't been to the tournament under Chris Beard. You haven't been to the tournament in a while. Like if Ole Miss makes the tournament, that is a good yes. season for Ole Miss. We're oh, talking about Ole year. Miss basketball. Great Love year. you, Ole Miss, but we're talking about Ole Miss basketball here, right? Oh, how many? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It would be their tenth appearance ever. Ever. That's a great season for Ole ever. Miss basketball. Yep. And ever. I mean, again, 
I, Chris Beer can do whatever he wants. He can turn Ole Miss into a power. He can do all that. But if he takes Ole Miss to the NCAA tournament, uh, it's going to be a long <laughs> list. He going to his phone's going to get blown up, man. Yep. Um, all right. Give me the grades for the off season for Ole Miss for you. Yeah, I'll, I'll give him a I'll give him a B plus. I'll give him a B plus. I think it was solid. Uh, you know, like you said, uh, you, you know, you bring in some some scoring punch. You bring in you know Padula there from Virginia Tech, who's got the point guard experience. Um, I think it's a B plus. I don't think it's an A plus. I don't think they had anybody that's necessarily you know transcendent that's going to come in here and, and and change everything. But you, you got some players that weren't as good out, and you got some better players in. And so I will give I'll give Chris Beard and Ole Miss a B plus. I'm going to go with an A minus. Um, I was at about a B until Matthew Morrell decided to come back to school. And when you get a guy that had a chance to be like a top 45 pick that might step in and be like SEC first, all first team SEC um, has an outside shot at potentially being an all American. Like when you can get that guy back, I think that that kind of changes some things as well. Yeah. So I'll, I'll go with an A minus, but we're, we're kind of on the same page there. So listen, uh, John, this has been fun. Ole Miss keep an eye on them this year. They're going to be sneaky good. And we have about 45 of these that we're going to be rolling out over the course of the next two months. So uh, stay tuned for the field of 68 for all of our off season grades.